looking specifically at the finance organisation now, Ian, you're the chairman of the Financial Reporting Committee of the 100 Group of Finance Directors. How has COVID-19 impacted sort of financial reporting and what are the key issues for you and your members at the moment? I think the, the challenge going into this, uh, particularly for companies with a March 31st year end, was, hang on a second, how do we close the books? You know, something as fundamental as that. Working with auditors who were really and entirely appropriately, one might say, very focused on going concern, viability statements, a lot of focus in terms of providing clarity, uh, risk assessments with clarity around viability. And, you know, obviously 100 group members, you know, navigated that with significant success, although in different industries, different levels of stress based on customer activity levels, very, very different across the, the membership of the 100 group. But I think if you look beyond just the challenges of closing books, doing reporting in, in a virtual setting, uh, meeting your regulatory compliance, I, I think one of the things that we've seen move up the agenda, certainly from a regulatory perspective and from a user of financial statements, is an understanding around ESG. So what are companies doing from an environmental perspective, sustainability and sustainability by every definition of that word in a corporate setting and governance? Is there good governance in place? So now on the one hand, that is a very powerful force in, in the sense that, look, I think this is central to how good corporations conduct themselves with an eye to you know every stakeholder that they serve, whether it's their colleagues who work in the company, their customers, their regulators, the wider public, absolutely vital. However, what we are seeing is a bit of a bandwagon that every financial reporting regulator on the face of the planet and many more beside are jumping on the bandwagon of how you do good ESG reporting. This is what we'd like, that's what we'd like. And there's a proliferation of measures which when you then try to do compatibility, and that's one of the great things, you know, the investor community wants to be able to compare different investment decisions. So how do you provide compatibility across this when there's proliferation measures being used? So the, so the good thing is ESG is moving up the corporate reporting agenda. It's moving up the investment decision maker agenda. And I think the challenge for those in industry, regardless of the industry now, is how they engage with regulators and try and create a reasonably consistent global framework for non, shall we call it, this is a terribly broad definition, but non-financial reporting in that setting. Because, you know, you've got sort of broadly international financial reporting standards and then the US, whether we ever get the US to adopt IFRS, different matter. But at the moment, without too much um, head scratching, I could probably come up with five different versions of non-financial reporting proposals that are out there just now some of which make a great deal of sense, some of which tend to be somewhat parochial in outlook. So it's great that it's moving itself up the agenda from a corporate reporting perspective. As players in the space, we just need to be engaged, first and foremost, then very thoughtful about how we develop reporting that is meaningful to the user of that reporting, whether it's an NGO, whether it's a regulator, whether it's a shareholder, whether it's a customer. And I think that's going to be one of the, the challenges as we move forward from here. And frankly, it's one of those challenges that may prove more difficult to work through if we're all working virtually and remotely, ironically. But that's an interesting space. But look, right now, the initial focus was on sustainability, survivability, making sure we've got the funding in place, doing the basics right, keeping customers served and moving forward. And as we, as we get you know, beyond the initial shock of that, we're moving to, OK, how do we learn lessons from this, make the customer experience better? make the experience for all our stakeholders better and how do we provide information that supports decision making. It's a never ending uh, space of interest and, and evolution and, and frankly, the pandemic hasn't really gotten in the way of that. If anything, it's accelerated it.